A little boy was in a coma for five years, but when he suddenly wakes up, he makes a terrifying revelation about his mother, and the doctors quickly call the police. It was early evening, and the sky was beginning to darken. Elizabeth was finishing up some customer service for her online jewelry store as she worked from home. The working day was always tiring, but the worst part was when she finished and found herself alone. Again, so quiet. She sighed, looking around. Loneliness gripped her as she looked at a photo on her desk. The photo was of her with her late husband Robert and their son Owen when the boy was just six years old. Oh, how I wish you were here. A tear escaped her eyes, leaving a trail of sadness on her face. Elizabeth closed her laptop, left her home office, and sat down on the living room couch, taking a deep breath. The house was silent. She could only hear the muffled, almost imperceptible sound of the cars on the street outside. She felt suffocated by the absence of the ones she loved most. The silence seemed to fill every corner of the house, making the loneliness even more unbearable. Oh Lord, I can't take this anymore. I can't stay here. Will I be alone forever? Please, at least bring my son back to me. She prayed, with her heart heavy. Tears flowed freely as the poor woman remembered the tragic day that changed her life forever. And to make matters worse, that day marked exactly five years since her son fell into a coma and never woke up. She cried every day, succumbing to sadness, trapped in a routine of pain and weakened hope. Every corner of the house held memories of her beloved son and husband. His room, still intact, was a sanctuary of happy memories. His toys, books, and clothes were exactly where the little one left them. Each object was a silent reminder of a life interrupted. Elizabeth missed her son's laughter, his voice, and the innocent conversations they shared. The pain of their absence was a constant weight on her chest, a wound that would never heal. She spent her days looking after her online store, trying to distract herself, but nothing filled the void in heart. But the universe had its own plans. Suddenly, as if the heavens had heard her prayers, the phone rang. The sudden ringing of the phone made her jump, startled. Her heart raced as she picked up the phone, with a mixture of hope and fear in her heart, when she saw that it was a call from the hospital where her son had been admitted for years. Elizabeth, oh my God, Owen, he's awake, shouted the voice on the other end of the line, full of emotion. That poor mother couldn't believe what she was hearing. Her thoughts swirled around in her mind, mixed with a sense of disbelief and hope. Owen is awake! Oh my God! My son! She shouted as she hurried to get her car keys. She barely managed to grab her bag or a coat. She just rushed out to the hospital, her chest almost bursting with happiness. The woman visited her son four times a week and worked tirelessly as a freelancer to support his expensive treatment and hospitalization. The memory of Robert, her husband who had died months after the boy had fallen into a coma, added even more to her pain. She had to endure all that suffering alone. Robert, he's awake, love, she whispered, as if her husband could hear her. Owen is finally awake. It was a dream they both had, but Robert didn't live long to see it. Oh, is he really awake? Please, Lord, don't let it be a false alarm. The mother cried as she drove fast through the streets, her tears blurring her vision. She remembered everything she'd been through, all the times she'd cried out and prayed for a miracle that was never answered. Every desperate prayer, every sleepless night by Owen's bedside, everything came back to her mind in a whirlwind of emotions. As she drove, her heart was pounding. The anticipation to see her son, who was now 11 years old, hearing his voice and seeing his little face light up when she arrived was almost unbearable. My son? My Owen! She dried her tears, speeding through the city. The journey to the hospital seemed endless, but the woman didn't slow down. She needed to get there as quickly as possible. Elizabeth quickly parked the car and rushed into the hospital. She hurried past the reception desk where the staff already knew her well. She quickly ran up the stairs, feeling her heart almost burst with emotion. Every step took her closer to her son, and her anxiety grew by the second. When she finally reached Owen's room, she ran in shouting, Owen, son, panting, her face full of happy tears. However, what she found was something that baffled her. The doctors had astonished looks on their faces, trying to calm the little boy who was sitting in bed, 
crying and screaming. And as soon as he laid eyes on his mother, the boy simply screamed, She killed my father! She killed my father! Owen shouted again and again, his words piercing Elizabeth's heart. The happiness she felt on hearing that her son had woken up turned into indescribable dread. The woman entered the room and was paralyzed when she heard those words. She tried to pull herself together and said, Son, oh my god, uh, you're finally awake! She approached, but the little boy kept screaming, although still weak, since he hadn't used his voice in five years. Don't come near me, Mom! You killed Dad! He repeated with a tone of despair. The woman stopped and stood there for a moment with no reaction. What are you talking about, Owen? How can you say something like that? It's me, Mom! Did you have a nightmare? She asked, her voice full of pain and confusion. Elizabeth's mind was whirling, trying to understand how her son could say something like that. The little boy dried his tears and said once again, I heard everything, Mom. I've always heard you. You might have thought I was asleep, but I know everything. And you confessed. Why did you kill Dad? At that moment, Elizabeth fell to her knees on the floor, and tears began to flow from her eyes. The pain and shock were overwhelming. How could he have heard what I said? She thought, feeling her heart squeeze. He was in a coma. How does he know that? The doctors, who were petrified, had known Elizabeth for years and knew of her sad history. But they could never have imagined anything like this. Was it possible? Was she really a murderer? They quickly began to mobilize. Some took Elizabeth to another room and held her there, while others called the police. The little boy was getting more and more upset, and the situation needed to be brought under control. They kept trying to calm him down. Elizabeth, however, didn't react at all and simply allowed herself to be taken to an isolated room in the hospital. There, she waited until the authorities arrived and began their interrogation. Her mind was in chaos, trying to process her son's accusation and the consequences it would bring. When the police finally arrived, they immediately asked, Ma'am, did you kill your husband? An officer asked, looking at her with a firm gaze. The intensity of his gaze seemed to pierce her soul, bringing out all the pain and guilt she carried. There was no way out. Everyone would know the truth now. So she replied through tears and sobs. Yes, yes, I did. The words came out broken, full of regret and sadness. Each word was like a stab in her own heart. The confession was met with absolute silence. The officers exchanged glances, not knowing exactly how to react to that blunt confession. And for Elizabeth, that moment seemed to last an eternity. Her mind traveled back in time, remembering every painful detail that had led her to commit that act. The weight of the guilt and the secret kept for so long now would be her end. Meanwhile, in Owen's room, the doctors tried to calm him down, but he continued to cry and scream. His words echoed in the corridors of the hospital, getting weaker and weaker with every effort. The poor mother, isolated in that small room, felt suffocated by the weight of her own actions and the terrible revelation that her own son had made to the world. She knew that this was only the beginning of a long journey of pain and regret. But what happened to that family? Why did Elizabeth kill her husband? And how did Owen know about all this? Let's explain. This family story was marked by tragedy, loss, and sadness. It all started when Elizabeth, her husband Robert and their son Owen, who was six at the time, were taking a family trip to celebrate the man's birthday. It was a lovely trip, and they had a lot of fun for days on the beach. The little boy loved it. As an only child, Owen was his parents' world. Every moment was filled with laughter, games, and contagious happiness. They built sandcastles, jumped waves, and enjoyed delicious meals in beautiful restaurants. Owen was always the center of Elizabeth and Robert's universe. He had inexhaustible energy and a smile that lit up any room. His parents spoiled him with gifts and affection, always wanting the best for him. The photos taken during the trip showed a united and happy family, full of love and dreams for the future. But fate had already sealed something terrible for that poor family. On the way back, a group of criminals followed them, wanting to steal the car. But when Robert realized the threat, he sped up the car in an attempt to get away, and a chase ensued. The road, deserted and full of curves, became a scene of a horror movie. Fear gripped everyone in the vehicle, and the man did everything he could to protect his family. The tragedy happened when they fell into a ravine on the side of the road. 
The car rolled over several times before coming to a stop, but Elizabeth, who was the only one wearing a seatbelt, managed to get out without serious injuries as the belt held her in place. However, her husband and son were not so lucky. Robert and Owen were thrown out of the car. The little boy never woke up again, and Robert suffered multiple lacerations to his organs. He survived but underwent many treatments that didn't help much, and due to lack of room in the hospital, he had to be treated at home. The weeks that followed were full of pain and despair for Elizabeth. She was torn between looking after her son in the hospital and her seriously injured husband at home. The house, which had once been full of laughter, became a place of sadness and suffering. Oh Lord, how am I going to endure this? She spent sleepless nights praying for Owen and looking after Robert. Each day became a constant struggle against the physical and emotional pain. Guilt ate away at her heart as she was the one who had planned the trip and the happy memories of those moments were mixed with the horror of the accident. She prayed every day for a miracle, but reality was relentless. Then, in a moment of desperation, the woman did something unthinkable. I took care of him. I did everything I could. I swear. She cried. But the money was running out, since her husband could no longer work, and the money she earned wasn't enough to pay for Robert and Owen's treatment. Robert couldn't stand the suffering any longer. The treatments weren't working, and he felt that his organs would soon fail. That's when he asked his wife to do something terrible. Please, love, just fight for our son. He begged her to use everything they had to get Owen to wake up again. Don't waste any more money on me, I won't make it anyway. At least Owen still has a chance. Elizabeth told her story, crying, and the difficult decision she had to make when the hospital told her that if she didn't pay Owen's medical expenses, they would have to reassign the room to someone else. We, we had to choose Robert's life or Owen's. She revealed between sobs. I didn't want to, but there was no other way. A week later, when they stopped buying Robert's medication to pay for Owen's treatment, the man passed away. The poor girl suffered a great deal, feeling the remorse and guilt of having taken Robert's life, his chance to live, to fight. Elizabeth always visited her son and used to tell him everything. So she also told him about his father speaking softly. Forgive me, son. I, I didn't save your father. I, I killed him. But what she didn't know was that the little boy, even in his coma, could hear some things. So he was left thinking that his mother had killed his father, without fully understanding the real reason and how much she had suffered. When they heard the truth, the doctors and officers in the room were teary-eyed emotional and feeling compassion for that poor mother who had to choose between the two people she loved the most. They could feel the depth of the pain and sacrifice Elizabeth had faced, living a constant nightmare for five years. The doctors, used to dealing with difficult situations, had never seen such a devastating story. They had always known her as the devoted mother who never stopped visiting her son, never stopped fighting for him, but now everyone understood the weight she was carrying. Poor thing. Even the police officers, trained to maintain their composure in any situation, couldn't help but get emotional. Elizabeth's story was a tragedy that no one should have to face. They knew that the law had to take its course, but they couldn't help feeling deeply saddened by what she had been through. The poor woman had suffered enough. Elizabeth was released, but now she had to explain the truth to her son, that he had come back from the coma with a distorted view of the sacrifice her mother had made and how much she had suffered. It took a few days, with doctors and even the police talking to the boy, for him to understand that his mother loved him and also loved his father. They carefully explained the whole story, from the accident to the daily suffering she faced to keep the family together. The doctors explained that during the coma, it was possible that Owen had picked up fragments of the conversations and created a distorted narrative. They assured the boy that his mother did everything out of love and that the painful decision to stop Robert's treatment was a desperate choice to save his life. Little by little, Owen, now older, began to understand. He slowly recovered, both physically and emotionally, and his relationship with his mother began to blossom again. Trust, once shaken, was rebuilt step by step. Elizabeth was always by his side, explaining and reaffirming her love. Your father would have loved to see how big you've gotten, darling. She teased him. They spent hours talking, 
remembering happy times and crying together over their losses. Owen realized how much his mother had suffered and how much she loved him. He saw the pain in her eyes, the same pain he felt when he learned that he had lost his father. This understanding brought a new depth to their relationship. I'm sorry, Mom, that I didn't wake up, he said, tears streaming down his face. They cried together, their tears mixing, and at that moment they felt they could face anything as long as they were together. The pain and suffering they had experienced would bring them even closer together, turning tragedy into renewed strength. And so that small family of two moved on, finding strength in each other. Owen, now stronger and healthier, started going to school again and making new friends. And Elizabeth went back to work with her online store, but always prioritized her time with her son. It was like a dream come true, except that Robert would always be missed. But having her son back was more than a great miracle. Elizabeth was grateful every day for the second chance she had received. Owen was the only part of her beloved husband that she had left, and she promised herself that she would do everything she could to ensure that he had a happy and fulfilling life. God had given them a new chance, and she knew she would never be alone now. Every day was a gift, and she enjoyed every moment alongside her son, grateful for life and the strength they had found in the midst of adversity. And if you liked this story, I'm sure the next video that pops up on your screen will move you too. Don't forget to subscribe. Give us a thumbs up and activate the notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. See you in the next heartwarming story.